Good afternoon internet and welcome back to Crash Test Gaming. We are getting back to our game of Arms Trade Tycoon Tanks and when we left off it was late, oh sorry, early 1916, it was earlier January and the executives at Rolling Thunder Incorporated decided to institute time travel and so we are now in March of 1917. I had hoped to shoot forward a bit further but uh, life being life and the need to touch grass I didn't get as long to play it last night as I wished to and I uh, didn't realize there was no auto save feature on the game and so I lost quite a bit of progress but be that as it may this is a very interesting part to come back to the game so I'll get you guys quickly caught up with what's going on in the world uh, we have continued along and we have hired Walter Wilson as a new administrator. Now he comes with a very important ability in that he increases engineers per line by 15. So we have thrown him into research because that effectively adds 50% to our research, 15 engineers. So we hired him, threw him into research and uh, he also adds 20% to running gear and 20% to power and those are two things that we are looking at for research because if we pull that up we have re uh, researched the Mark 8 and the FHA steel and the cab so we've moved along there so to make the Mark 8 we need the tracks and the engine and we will have a Liberty so that's the tank that never actually saw action in World War I, but it was built and it was planned to be brought in for the offensive in 1918. But the war ended before uh, that offensive was needed, so that was excellent. So that's where we are as far as research is concerned. And we probably also want to get a bit more firepower, the anti-infantry rounds and uh, enhanced guns and ammunition still. We want to get a Vickers machine gun as well, but that's, I think that's most of the tanks taken care of. I've, I've missed a couple of sponsor and upgrades I could have picked up. We'll got, probably go back and get those, but uh, that's where we are on research. Now, the other big thing that happened was the British government, wise though they are, they captured two tanks. They captured a... French tank and a German tank. So we managed to get the French FT-17. That only just happened. So we've got the Char Schneider tracks from when we reverse engineered the Huntsman. And we've got still got to reverse engineer everything on that tank. And we also got the LK-2 from Germany. And we're about halfway through reversing... The engineering on that we've got the engine which is a very good engine uh, we've got tracks we've got the center so the plan is that this is going to become our tank that is under ten dollars so if we pop to the world map the reason not ten dollars ten tons if we look at uh, france and the tank cores They've got saturation tanks that they're going to want at some stage. They haven't even begun ordering any tanks. But, uh, and it doesn't look like any of the battalions at the moment are slated to become saturation tanks. But that is a tank type which has a maximum weight limit of 10 tonnes. So we are going to need to develop a very lightweight small tank to fulfil that need. And we have pretty much sold exclusively to the British government. If you look at the Brits here, they now have a massive tank force of our tanks. We haven't lost a contract. And we recently finished our first contract for the Italians. Now that the Italians just got uh, the drop bear Mark II, which is uh, the secondary steel upgraded drop bear. Now they were looking for a fusillade tank, which I now know is a assault tank that has a soft attack focus. And I don't really have a design that fits that very well. So we sold them for the maximum amount of money which will be interesting to know the drop bear which is an under 20 ton tank that uh, is used we use it to sell for the lighter tank jobs but it it uh, won the contract for the larger tank jobs and 
they paid 52500 for it, which is the most they'd pay for any tank in the contract. So we were more than happy to sell that. But th- that's to note that we'll uh, we'll have to buy a few f- Fusillade tank designs. We'll have to think about how we're going to build those. So we might want to get the Vickers gun and do some soft attack uh, upgrades. And I think that's just about that. We captured, well, the British captured some territory down here in Ethiopia, where we're uh, we're having another battle. Our drop bear Mark 1s will be in battle here against the Kaffir Division shortly. So that's uh, carrying five Hotchkiss machine guns. So, so far in all the combat our tanks have been involved in, we've done very well. There's not really anything to match tanks at the moment. And... Um, I think Portugal's getting close to... Oh, it's got two provinces left. So there's been some switching of provinces going on. As you can see, Belgium is pretty much done. They've lost uh, all their spare areas to uh, Germany. But the, the world is continuing, so our job is to reverse engineer these tanks. And the FT is has an interesting turret in this turret actually holds a, a gun that doesn't look like a machine gun so that'll be interesting to see what that'll be but uh, I think to begin with we currently reverse engineering the Krupp turret and then we'll do the German machine gun be finished with that tank and then move on to the French tank just to do it sequentially so I think that pretty much catches it all up so we will continue forward and uh, come back when something is happening in the world. So we've had a new contract come in from the British. They want us to supply them with exploitation tanks, so 20 ton tanks, soft power focus. So we currently have 28 drop bears in our storage, so we'll probably sell them those. Oh, that's the wrong side. And what's our competition is the Odysseus Mark II, so we should handily beat that. We've got them in stock, so we'll just give ourselves far too much time to deliver them. We'll sell them 30. And what sort of price can we get? 35,000 for them. And they cost about 17000 to make, so we'll be doubling our money. And that all looks A-OK. Number of battles there. We also discovered that we've got message settings here. Probably don't want military development news. Uh, I think we'll keep war news just in case battles that we're interested in come up. But uh, that'll help relieve us of a lot of that spam that comes up. So our drop bears have finished manufacturing. Has the contract been accepted? What stage is it at? It's in review. There we go. Accepted. So we will send off our tanks. Just do the medium priority delivery. 30 tanks, send them off, that should be all good, and we are currently designing the Mark 8 hull, so once that comes up, which is now, we can see, I am interested to know whether we can make a Mark 8 with uh, the Mark 5 tracks and engine, so I the interesting thing as well with the engines is I think the captured German engine is our best engine. So our best Tyler is a 157 point engine. Our best Ricardo is a 154 point engine. And our captured German one that uh, drives around the little LK, which is under 10 tonnes, is our best engine and so we could use that little engine to drive a mark um eight which seems a little strange 
Seems a little strange, and we can put the tadpole tracks on it. Oh, that is interesting. Put in the better cab. Put in Mark IV Sponsons. Now this is interesting because this tank has no machine guns. So maybe we should put a female sponsor on so it's got some machine gun power. And we'll put in two of our Hotchkiss machine guns. And we take a look at the protection, see how much... So it's got a 30mm front. So that's not much thicker than the Mark V, which I think was 28. I think the Schneider's pretty thick as well. So the, the armour on these bigger tanks, these heavy tanks, isn't that thick. I, I guess um, there wasn't really any weapons, many weapons to go through it, and artillery was considered too big to, to armour against anyway, and the engines weren't that powerful. But that that is interesting. So, commander, driver. Two gunners... A loader, a mechanic, I don't think we'll need an extra mechanic, and that's a, that's a lot of spare room, so I'm, I'm guessing these tanks were meant to have the dual, the dual sponsons that I skipped in research that have the gun and the machine gun, so they're meant to have two guns and two machine guns, rather than this type of design. So we will call this the Mark 8. We'll call it Bull. After the Bull No Shark. Because it is such a... Well, one, somebody wanted uh, the tanks named after sharks. And two is... This is one big boy. This is a massive tank in terms of size. So we, if we get 40 engineers to work on that, that'll be 31 days. And did I remember to put expendables in it? No, I didn't. So I've got to do that whole thing again. We'll just clone it. Get rid of the original. AP, HE, spare HE, machine gun ammo, and petrol. And we'll just go for a deep green on this tank, I think, just to switch it up. 31 days to develop this tank. All the components are there, all the crews there. So, 31 days, we'll have our first. Mini Liberty? I mean, it doesn't have the tracks and it doesn't have the engine for the Liberty, but uh, it does have the chassis. And so what I meant there uh, when I was talking about the dual sponsons, that's the combo sponson here. So that fits a main gun in the turret part of the sponson or the swivel and a machine gun on that little porthole there. So, I think we're probably missing that. Maybe the, um, the central cab has the possibility of having machine guns as well. Not sure. We will discover that as we go. Okay, we'll be back shortly. Okay, for the British LK, we are going to pretty much make a German set of tracks because all their components are super light and we want to make 
as light a tank as possible and then we'll, we'll take certain parts of it if we've got spare weight and upgrade those parts so we might make the cab out of uh, top grade steel in the end but to begin with we will uh, we'll have one just made out of iron so we can be sure to to get a tank under 10 tons so oh, do we want to put it in track so mass limit is Uh, we'll skip that. We'll make it exactly the same as the Germans had it because their tank was under 10 tonnes, I believe, the captured one. So we'll start with that and then make parts. Once we have a, a model done, we'll make parts that can fix it. And just machine guns now to pull apart. And contract 13 is complete. We now have 8.5 million in the bank. So that's 30 more tanks for Britain. We should probably assemble some drop bears as replacements. So we'll do that in two batches of 15, I think. And we might want to order in some material from Africa. There we go, and we'll just see if we can redevelop our Hotchkiss machine guns with the German machine gun taken apart. All these barrels are pretty much the same. They're all accuracy. Yeah. Uh, we'll go the rate of fire option. We'll go the German barrel because that is more accurate with a higher rate of fire. So this will reduce the range of our current machine guns a little bit. But I think it's worth the cost. Magazine 4, Stock Mark 2, we'll develop those and we will need to begin reverse engineering the French tank. So I think for the FT we might first pull apart its turret, see what sort of difference there is between the German turret and the French turret. And I think the machine gun will take two days because we haven't developed the Krupp turret yet from the German tank. And we want to make a plain iron turret that's of a Krupp design just for the super light tank design. Okay, so engineering turret. turret so we'll just make it out of iron we'll go for the German bolts for the extra structure and we'll go for a mark 2 hatch because that'll save us a tiny bit of weight probably should have named that iron so that'll take four days And then we can try putting together a lake wagon. Oh, well, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. I've been told my pronunciation of that word was terrible. Better for me just to call it an LK. And our drop bed tanks out in Ethiopia have had a victory, it would appear. These are our Mark 1s. So this was our first iteration of the drop bear. And it's green completely across the board. No losses in deployment. Recon was successful and got a 20% ambush bonus against the infantry. So targeting looks like it was all positive.
they all hit. No ricochets. All penetrated, so there's no cases of the bullets bouncing off horses or anything like that where that happened in the beta. And the damage, how many did we kill? 6,000 wounded, 3,500 killed. Oh no. Oh, the poor Ethiopians. Oh, they got absolutely shredded. Oh, wow. So why are they still... Oh yeah, broken. Here we go, 1700. So I'm guessing that's pre-battle. Pre-battle numbers and then the the menus on the side of the post. So they, they managed to um, recover 1200 men in the repair phase, but... Oh Jesus, they got annihilated. They got absolutely destroyed. Oh well, the tanks continue to be very strong, leading the charge for the British. This is excellent. We can sell some more. Let's just hope the Ethiopians can uh, blow a few up so we can sell them replacements. But uh, apart from that, everything is going swimmingly. So the Mark 8 is completed. We will go into design. And so this will just be a prototype LK that we're looking to make. We're trying to make it as lightweight as possible. So that is this one, is the one made out of iron. We'll put the four cylinder in. The tracks. Mark one turret is lighter. And we'll put in a bunch of the Hotchkiss machine guns. Alright, so that is 9.2 tonnes. So if we put the crew in, driver, commander, gunner, gunner, mechanic. Oh, not loader. Actually, I can't put a mechanic in that one. There we go. That's better, so that's everything covered. 9.5 ton. And pop that in some desert camo. And we will design that. So that's made out of iron. So we could have the, either the hull or the turret made out of the first upgrade of steel, but um, not both. Well, I think we'll just make it out of iron to begin with and save the 400 kilos. If we're smart, we'll probably go... Uh, I don't think those, those mud flaps that we left off the tracks will fit. I think they were over 400 kilos in weight, so that'll probably put it over. I'm sure when it comes down to it, you could go through, figure out exactly, I mean, we've got 436 kilos to play with and figure out your best bang for buck in upgrading either the armor or the turret or the tracks or the engine because there were better parts that I didn't put in because of weight. You could optimize for weight, but I think for now, considering this is just a playthrough to see what's going on, we will keep that to the side as a tank we can potentially sell f to France for that uh, that 10 ton assignment if it comes up. So we will develop that. That will take 13 days and we will get our type, our Mark 8, and take it for a test drive. So the bull, we will see just how big this tank is well oh, before we do that before I forget we'll go to the proving grounds probably need the skippy tested as well I forgot to do that when I designed it so the skippy is just a mark 5 with 6 pounder guns instead of the 3 pounder guns that the echidna was 
So we shall test drive this behemoth. And that is a big tank. Quite, uh, quite fast off the mark for such a, a large fat tank, I must say. This is, uh, I can tell before we, before we go, this is gonna, I'm gonna have issues uh, shooting all the targets with the machine gun sticking out the side like this <laughs> to get the, the gun pointing down in some of the spots where they need to point down. Oh no, don't tell me I'm stuck. This thing is just too big. No, that was just uh, a bit of a bump in the road that the model got stuck on. So we are all good as we continue. It turns like a whale, which makes sense because it looks a bit like a whale. It doesn't handle easily at all. And now let's see if we can get it up this ramp. I'm not 100% confident that the tank is just too long. Yeah, <laughs> it's too long. It can't it can't face upwards. Oh no, it's stuck. Oh no, this No, gonna get out of it. It's okay. Crisis averted. So if we come up like this, we might be able to Hit the nav. No. This tank does not move around this course much at all. I'm at this stage, I'm just thinking. Maybe it would be better just to, to quit the course and not worry about it. Oh gee, it doesn't want to get up that little bump in the ground. I wonder if I can reverse up it. Ah, there we go. That counts, apparently. There we go, take out that target. There we go, those targets taken out. Oh wow, this thing does not like to turn. Does not like to turn at all. And let's see if we can get through the chicane. Or is it too long? <laughs> it's far too long for this. No, we're fine, we're fine. and I have to bring the machine guns to bear on all these targets. Let's see. Success. Can we get the A7V over there? Yep. One thing's for sure, it doesn't like reverse. Alright. 
can go straight okay. Well, unless it hits a bump in the road, but it just sort of slips and slides. Oh, well, I do not recommend taking the liberty around the test drive course. It's quite succeeded getting up the trench there, which is good. So our biggest issue here is going to be time. We've been lumbering around this course, taking three point turns to get around pretty much every corner because this this tank does not like the terrain. And uh, we have just over a minute left to get through. And to be honest, this thing corners so slowly, I don't know if we're gonna make it. It's gonna be right down to the wire, I think. I had thought that the the time limit was absolutely ridiculously generous, but for this take, I think that the devs might be right on with how much time they've given us because this thing is god awfully slow. I'm going to have to destroy this tank here because I missed one of the targets earlier. I could not get the gun down. There we go. Completed the test drive in the Mark 8 and that was something I don't want to do again. We can't iterate so much on this design if I have to drive it around. That was an absolutely awful tank to drive. Absolutely awful. Oh well. So we are back into the engineering. We've just finished pulling apart the Girod tur turret. Next we're going to go for the little cannon that goes in there. We will pull that apart. That'll take 15 days. We'll go back to engineering. And I'm thinking that we might want to put this Girod tur turret onto the LK. And put the gun in the that's in the FT-17 into the LK. The LK's got... 28 for frontal armor which is pretty amazing for such a small light tank and we've got 500 kilos to play with so if we make an iron turret we could make a 10 kilo tank with heart attack that's under 10 tons and we could also do a steel turret for a more beefy LK if we make the chassis out of steel as well. So we'll go to turrets. We'll go to Girod turret. So that weighs a little less than the Krupp turret. So we will make one just out of iron so this will be our lightweight version and then we'll make one out of steel as a heavyweight version. We should be able to add a little bit of weight and put a mark. That'll make the awareness and aiming much better. I could put a periscope. I think that that one looks better, although oh, that's 230 kilos. I think I've got about 400 kilos to play with on the design. So if we put the sight on, that really, and if we update the turret hatch, oh, that's crew awareness. Do we want to go crew awareness or save some weight and go crew safety? We're seeing we've got the awareness from the from the site. We'll go for safety. Make that out of iron. That'll be four days. We'll get them working on that. And then after that we'll build one out of steel. So there we go. And... Now this steel Gerard turret we might throw onto the drop bear as well because we've got about a ton spare, it, well just I think about 1.2 tons or 1200 kilos spare in that 
to keep it under 20 kilos and that will add the ability to, of heart attack to that tank as well although with with FHA steel can we not I need to so we that might be too heavy to throw on the horner. Oh, we'll build it anyway and then see see what it's like after that. We will make that no no we won't because I've already started building it. And we'll come back once the design for the LK is ready, the lightweight. Okay, we will design our new tank, our new LK. If we... We're getting so many tanks now. Um, oh, we've got an LK that's automatically been designed. So how much does this weigh? So this this is oh yeah this is the one I just designed. So that's the original revision. So ideally we want to put a gear rod turret on that, but we will take it for a spin like this. But we will also create another design. So we will create. A much heavier design with oh we haven't pulled apart the gun yet We might do that first. Pull apart the gun and uh, it's five days away and then we need to build another gun. We can take the current LK, so this is the under 10 ton one, for a spin around the test track and see how it performs. So the LK Rev Zero. Let's see how this tank is. So we've got a turret now. That is going to make shooting targets a lot easier. Oh, these are skinny tracks. And the tank is quite sluggish. Very slow off the mark. I don't think it's going to get anywhere near top speed. Its top speed is about 10 kilometers an hour by the look of it. Maybe there's a stat on the engines I didn't pay attention to. So, I mean, this only weighs nine and a half tonne, this tank. So, I don't know if it's the tracks or if it's the engine. But it's definitely slow off the mark. I might have to go back to the drawing board with my thoughts on this one. Statistically, it looks fine. So... I'm a bit unsure as to what I've done considering the heavy tanks are much faster than this, our lightest tank. So this will be a test, <laughs> getting up a slope. Oh, I wonder how it's going to go through the second trench. This might not be able to get up. I mean it does, but... That was hardly convincing. Hardly convincing. Almost get stuck in the gap there. Very poor crossing. Maybe I've just uh, tried to save too much weight and underdone the parts. Do not know. Well. And that is much easier with the turret much much well I say that and then I keep on missing the target oh no don't tell me I'm not going to be able to get it out of this trench I don't know 
Why I always... I mean, this is as light as a tank can be made. And it's steering itself when it keeps on going off. Oh, oh, it got up. Oh, look at that. Look at that success. Success. Well, we're going to be happy with that. So I'm not sure what sort of score this will get and if we'll be able to ask for much money for it, considering it's a bit underdone in terms of tech, but to make that 10 ton tank, we can't really make this very strong, unfortunately. Oh, the turret doesn't go a, a full 360 degrees either, can only half turn. It's got about um, a 90 degree angle at the front arc, 45 degrees either side that it can you can get through. I'm making mincemeat of these targets, not doing a good job at all. There we go, we should be pretty much home and hose now. So, crossing the first trench was not convincing. Let's hope it gets across this second one. Yeah, no problems. No problems at all. As it turns the last corner for home, the LK has completed the course without a problem. Not the fastest tank, which is strange considering it's got the best engine and it's the lightest tank by far, but there we go. Its tracks look pretty anemic. So maybe the problem lies in that. So that will be marketable for our 10 ton, the LKO, O for original. And we will get working on the gun. So we finished researching the gun. We will move on to the hull of the FT-17. Start reverse engineering that. We'll go to engineering and we'll look at what we can do with the SA-17, pardon me, SA-18 I think it's called, sorry, there we go, SA-18, so, the question is, do we keep this super lightweight and hope it comes in under the 10 ton or do we initially just make the best gun possible? And I'm tempted to make the best gun possible within reason. So that's that's 14 kilos more. We just need to be careful about the amount of weight and what we get for that extra weight. So this is 26 kilos more. That's essentially the same. Emily 1 and 2... I mean, the mass is only 169. I don't think I'm going to get myself into too much trouble. I'll say that, and then I then I probably will. Uh, and we do need to watch the weight on the Hornet. I'm uh, sorry, the um, the Huntsman as well. So, I mean, these are some tasty bonuses to rate a fire, though. But it oh, it's like 60 kilos more. Ooh. Do we keep it anemic gun? I mean, the gun breach rate of fire is not that big a deal considering we'd be hoping that this wouldn't be fighting big targets with its hard target, that it would need high rate of fire. The optics, I think we can afford to get a bit more accuracy on that and a bit more anti-ricochet that's pure damage but we want penetration oh. I guess the main thing for this is penetration we're not going it to do soft damage that's what the machine guns are for so this is just to be able to penetrate a larger tank so we'll give that we'll give that a lightweight designation and we will develop that that's four days and then we will go back to the design and see if we can get this design in and keep the tank under 10 tons 
So, we create the original design, engine, tracks, lightweight tracks, lightweight turret, lightweight gun, three machine guns, 9441, looks like I'm going to have plenty of weight to spare, 9460. Call that the original anti-tank. So we we had room to spare there. Wonder if we could. No, the the other turret was like a ton heavier. We probably could have gone for the better, a much better gun. We had 540 kilos to play with. We could have gone for a much better gun. Oh, we need the crew, driver, commander, two gunners and a mechanic. Oh, sorry, no, not an extra commander. Gunner, that's what I was looking for. And... Oh, I guess what ammo are we going to put in this? Why can't I put... Oh no, I've already put that. Why not? I don't want to call it a clone. AP ammo, petrol 50. So, armor piercing, I think, is the way to go because this is just in case hard target. But that's going to do hardly any damage. I mean, plenty of penetration, hardly any damage. Oh, uh, well, it is what it is. We will. Assign them to... Oh, no. I don't want... I've already started. Oh, well. it just have a plain paint job. That's fine. So, we are now designing... That. And we'll go back and... Try and design a better gun for... The Hornet. So, we'll try and make a... The best gun we can. So weight is secondary here. We are looking for purely stats based performance. I think I prefer that massive gun depression. And the best optics would be Anything that's going to hit, so that's the best accuracy. So optics mark two, we will get that made. Oh, no, I've left it too late to run out again. Just uh, hurrying myself along a bit too quick here. I will go back and rename all these items later. Can probably reduce these messages even further as well. So, we can't really do anything until we are back from having the design done. Okay, and our lightweight LK2 with an armor-piercing gun is now finished. So, we shall design another LK2, but this time with a much stronger steel body. We might even... We could put the whippet tracks on. I mean, they're a lot heavier, but the allowable weight goes up to 16 tons instead of 11 tons, which will make the tank have a lot 
fewer defects so and it it just looks tasty so I think we'll go with that we'll go with the increased weight of the Mark II steel turret we'll put the improved gun out of the two onto that the heavier gun oh wow we got a 1914 I didn't even realize we had a 1914 machine gun Oh, I've got to go through and uh, do a whole lot more machine guns. That I mean, this this machine gun's got better stats. The the 1909 still. So I think there's still a bit of balance work to be done. Some of the engine upgrades and some of the gun upgrades seem like moves sideways. I mean, if we capture a French tank and they're using a 1914 version of the Hot Hotchkiss machine gun, we've got a 1909 version. And our 1909 is significantly better than the 1914 version. That doesn't make a lot of sense in my brain. I mean, there's probably reasons for it, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, my brain doesn't always register things correctly. And a couple of gunners. AP ammo, good petrol. And... We'll go AP again. Although it would be interesting to see what that cannon does with HE. I'd have to research whether it's going to be any good. We'll put um, some desert camo on this one. We'll call it the... So the idea here is this is a pretty well-armoured um, well tank that is super, super cheap to produce. And it's got good soft attack with three machine guns but it's also going to have hard attack as well so it's kind of a light tank you know only 12 tons but it's a jack of all trades so we can produce this very cheaply and see how it competes against the hornet see if it's going to do better in the contracts than the hornet did so we'll call this the steel lk2 can't think of a decent name for it. I shall think of a better name and a name at later. And we will begin producing that. But in the meantime, we will just quickly have a look at the gun on this thing, seeing as we've got one ready to go. So here we go. Here's a this is an under 10 ton LK with a small a piercing cannon it takes a long time to reload oh that uh, that does a decent job wow this tank is painfully slow painfully slow so France has come asking for 15 oh, I have oh we've got two contracts two contracts an exploitation tank and a nest nest buster tank we have got 15 drop bears and 30 skippies in in stock so we've got contracts and exploitation tank i think that will be the um the drop bear and let's see if we can get rid of the skippy from because uh, we've got 30 firepower hard reliability and protection so this is a mark 5 with two six pounders the skippy so that's I'll just back out and make sure that's the one I have in stock yeah ATV skippy so back to the contract because I have several versions of that uh, the French contract Competitor is the Taranus MLE-1, which comes in at 408. So if we go for the ATV Skippy, 1322. That's quite a nice score. I'm going to be expecting to be able to get quite a bit of money out of these guys. We come across as green on everything, so we meet everything they're looking for. We'll want to sell 30 of them to the French, and we won't the deadline to be 
I don't think we're going to need all these points, but uh, 48,000 is the most we can get for the tank. Yeah, so we'll just give ourselves plenty of room to be comfortable on the date. And we will send that off. And now for the British, they want exploitation tank. So now I'd normally sell the drop bear. That's an 878 score. How about a very cheap? So it's it's only going to cost us six thousand nine hundred and fifty to make the LK. So I mean that doesn't score much less than the drop bear which costs 16,000 to make and then if we give it hard attack instead of soft attack that that scores as good as the drop bear I mean we've still got 15 drop bears so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna press the drop bear here but for any further sales of exploitation tanks, we'll be idiots not to sell them the LK2 clone that we've got, the little iron one, not even made out of steel, with the with the AP. And that the thing is, with the AP, if it comes up against other armoured cars or light tanks, it's going to do quite well, because they'll probably only have machine guns. And that's got 28mm on its frontal armour, which is enough to withstand bullets. I mean, it's stronger than most of the British tanks. Alright, so we sell them the drop bear, we'll sell them 30, we'll give ourselves plenty of time. How much money are we going to get? Not enough, so we'll cut back. How long will it take? take about 15 days to manufacture all those tanks, so 9th to the 6th. go to about the 20th. Oh no, we're going to have to drop some money. That is unfortunate. We could have made more money there. But this gets rid of the other 15 tanks, which I don't think we're going to be selling any more drop airs after this. Not when we can make so much money selling the LK2. So, and we don't even know how good our FT-17 is going to be when we start designing that. So, we will... sell those make some cash we'll just need to make sure we produce the other 15 of them so we'll go to the factory the drop bear two there we go 15 Yeah, 15 days, so we'll do that in plenty of time. As long as there's not a fire, we are going to be fine. And we shall. <laughs> I just glanced at my watch and it looks like I'm going to be finishing up here. I've gone over time again. Uh, I will endeavour to play a bit more offline tonight and tomorrow hopefully get us closer to the tier 2 uh, tech tree and hopefully be able to see that tomorrow but for now I will catch you guys later just a couple of days till release uh, two more days till we get the full release on Steam so that'll be great uh, well I'm assuming it, it releases on the 6th for everyone in Australia here it is re releasing on the 6th but there is some time difference so for Europe and the US, I'm not sure if it's the 6th or the 5th, but uh, should be check local times for that uh, on your Steam. Okay, take care all. See you later.